All right, we will call to order the Summersworth Historic District Commission meeting for Wednesday, April 24th. First on the agenda, approval of minutes of meetings from March 27 workshop and March 27 regular meeting minutes. Um, I did not have any comments or changes to the uh, workshop meeting minutes. Richard, did you have any for yours? Um, I would just, they're a bit different than I presented, but I'll leave that conversation for in miscellaneous tonight. Um, I just request that my name was taken off of, off of them and whoever did fill them out a little bit better than me, take credit. All right, thank you. Any comments or changes to the meeting minutes from the board? Tim. Yes, Madam Chair, I'd like on the very last page, page five, bottom of the paper, to strike the word reluctant and replace it with the word excited. No seconds. With that same comment, I'd like to make an amendment that it be not my name on there. <laughs> All right, so Richard, you're requesting that we strike your name um, as submitted? Yeah. All right. Any other changes or comments about the meeting minutes? Do we have any motions? Tim. Motion to accept as presented. Both or one or the other? Both, both minute sets, the, both the meeting as well as the workshop. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Liz. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain. And one abstain, Chef. All right. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, projects of minimal impact report. Dana. Yes, um, there are two projects that were re reviewed and approved as minimal impact this month. 62 Market Street um, had an application to roof in kind and re roof in kind, and it was approved. And One Beacon Street had a, an application to re roof in kind and was approved as well. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we'll open up the floor to comments by visitors. If anybody would like to come up and make a comment at this time, please do so. All right, seeing there are none at this time, we will move on to old business. First on the agenda, uh, this is Peter Merrill is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install a dormer on a pro proposed attic unit in a property located at 85. 86 B High Street. This is continued over from the March 27, 2024 meeting. Dana, do you have anything to add? Um, so as you indicated, it was continued from, it was originally continued from the February meeting for, um, to have the applicant provide a drawing of the proposed dormer roof, a drawing of placement of the roof and where that falls on the facade an exact detail of materials used and plans and details for the fire, es fire escape if one is proposed. The applicant did provide to us um, and some additional materials. We apologize that it was not included in your packet. It did come, um, we had been trying to get your packets out earlier so you can get information earlier, um, but that was provided to you on your desk um, for some information regarding materials and the picture is double-sided just in case anyone did not notice that but that is all all right thank you dana do we have an applicant who would like to speak a little bit more about the project tonight or that can be here for questions okay uh if we do we'll call you up and have you state your name if needed all right i will open this up to the board for comments questions or concerns paul thank you um the Draw, I'm not really saying a drawing, I guess I would say. I'm, I'm, so the, my comment would be it's a, almost a rendering. It's a Photoshop of the intent, which is helpful. Um, I think the place, the intended placement, and I would just want to clarify this and whatever approval, is that the center mullion, for lack of a better term, of the double window in the dormer is centered on the third window of this section of the building, right? So it's uh, in terms of alignment. Um, so I think that's useful. What I'm, what gives me pause is that we still don't have dimensions and, uh, as it under, as you know, they're looking to replicate the existing dormer, but as it's presented, 
I don't think we can actually tell that that's that that is what we are approving. So I don't know if that's going to be a condition of approval. It occurred to me that um, obviously the board has previously approved the other dormer and a building permit was issued for that. So maybe staff could dig out the drawings from the approval for the building next door that has the dormer they're looking to replicate. So they ha we have dimensions and they have a drawing to go off of. Um, try not to burden them with documentation that might be onerous, but at the same time would want some level of certainty that we're going to get what the intent is. Did you want to come up and answer anything around those questions or comments? Okay. And again, I'll just have you state your name for the record and make sure the little green light's on. Peter Mara. On that, you were just saying with the old applicant, I got it. I have it physically. There's no measurements on it. Oh. Zero. Sweet. So the one that I'm building is going to be identical to the one that is three feet away from it. I mean, I don't know how much more clearer I can be. Unless you want me to climb on the roof and get the measurements. Paul. I guess I'm curious, and maybe staff knows this, but if, if, would a building permit be issued for a dormer like this? Uh, yes, a building permit would be required. And does that building permit require dimension drawings? I wouldn't. I would honestly defer to Tim because he has more experience in uh, reviewing and approving permits. Um, typically there is a section for dimensional drawings on permits. Defer to uh, Sure, I'll is. answer that. At the time that dormer was constructed, I was the building official here. Um, and it did receive permits. The dimensions would have been on the building plan and it would have needed to be on that building plan to confirm that where the front wall sits is on the outside wall of the existing structure. There's a number of reasons that it would need beyond the fact that it would most likely have tried to com to be what the HDC had approved as well. So there are some documents with dimensions on it, probably on the original um, building permit application, not necessarily the HDC application, but I'm hesitant to think that it, it wasn't there. If not dimensions, it may have been within the language of the application. I'm not sure. I don't recall. All right. So I'll just conclude my thought here in being, again, I'm trying, I'm truly not trying to be onerous and I understand your intent and I believe that you are capable of replicating it. But I guess our, it's a question for the f other folks on the board, like how can we provide, a you know, an approval, I suppose, with a condition that, uh, you know, that it is truly replicating that existing dormer dimensionally. And the risk on your part is, because we don't have drawings to approve and compare, is that if it doesn't, then presumably, you know, you'd be out of compliance and I don't know what the repercussions of that are, but that would, you know, that's what we're trying to avoid, right? Any other comments, questions? Uh, Tim. Um, I'm struggling to find exactly what I was looking for within the packet, but I remember reading that this was originally tabled with a list of conditions to come back with us. And I'm not sure if this, oh, thank you. There were four items, a drawing of the proposed roof drama, a drawing of the replacement on the roof and where that falls on the facade, an exact detail of the materials used, and plans and details for a fire escape if one such is a proposed. Thank you, Tina. Um, so the list that was provided potentially meets that requirement. It's, it's difficult for me to absorb it, seeing as I've only seen this document for about seven minutes. It wasn't in the original packet, which it could have been provided a little bit more timely, but it might not have been the applicant's um, issue. It was received on the 19th. Today's the 24th, so it was five days ago so six um what was what's the deadline to receive items to be sent to the to us 
Do you have that information? Typically two weeks prior to the meeting is for when applications are submitted. Sometimes with continued applications, we will allow for them to submit closer to the meeting than a fresh application that needs a full review by um, for minimal impact and creating a new thing. Right. We'll give a little more leeway for existing applications. Um, you know, I really would rather put this application behind us in some manner, but receiving it on the 19th, I'm not even sure... I don't have enough. I don't didn't have enough time really to compare what was supposed to happen, what did happen. Seeing as this was only on our desk when we walked in the room, so that's my opinion at this time. I I, I think it would be better serve this board in order for us to review the information, um, perhaps to get back to the applicant. But I wouldn't want to really do that either. If that means a whole, what if we look at it in preparation and realize hey he's missing one or two things and we don't have an opportunity to bring that forward until next month which that's unfair as well so I'm open to assistance in this decision but I'm a little hesitant to accept the information as it was received so late but that's my opinion Liz um, it says on the list just fire escape sprinkler system it's on the same page as all the material that you guys asked for. Okay, so you're saying there will not be a fire escape? You're using no, the sprinkler, sprinkler system, system instead? System. Okay. Yeah, I carry it from the bottom floor up. Okay. Paul? While we're on that list, um, <clears throat> just to keep the application moving forward, and I defer largely to uh, fellow members here as I'm still getting my head around what... Um, <clears throat> your <clears throat> excuse me tolerances are for materials but be curious to hear folks um, thoughts on the materials listed here is the uh, certain teed uh, restoration classic double is that um, some sort of cementitious siding is that uh, vinyl it's vinyl siding. it's vinyl So just curious of uh, what folks think about the proposed materials. Um, going back to this original next door application, um, I think to answer some questions from my memory, I obviously don't have the packet from when this was first directed. Uh, I believe we got a rendering. I do not believe it had dimensions on it, to be very honest with you. So that was probably part of the building. I remember getting um, they gave us a choice of two different dormers and they were kind of saying these are the two we want to do when we picked from those two um one I, was brick i think uh was the other one was a typical gable through. dormer uh one of the things that we did hold fast to with this particular one was i believe we said uh hardy board siding um so i would assume i would be in mindset of doing the same with this one because that was a stickler for that original dormer for me um, because with vinyl, it cracks. This is in an area where it's not easy to get to. And with the hardy board, it's kind of easy to maintain. There's not much to it. Um, for the dimension part for me, and I'm just going to speak for myself here, I think I could be okay with saying um, in language to move this forward that it's centered on that um, second window in from you know, the section or the third, the middle window, however we want to phrase that. I'd also say that I'd be uh, fine with saying that the height of the dormer cannot uh, go above what the neighbor dormer is. Uh, same with the window size, that it has to be, you know, um, not higher or bigger. Um, I think we could get wording into our approval to feel comfortable, in my opinion. Um, but I'm just curious what others feel. Richard? Yeah, I, I do remember, uh, I believe that is hardy board that was proposed for that, and it is far more durable product, and, you know, it's minimal square footage. It would be No, it, it, that's fine. I just went with the material list that was from the one that you guys approved, um, and I didn't see where it was switched, but that doesn't, okay. hardy board's fine with me. Um, other than that, I think as long as, you know, we did have some language that, kept it to the same dimensions I, I think I'd be okay with approving this tonight obviously there's no fire escape to discuss it sounds like sprinkler systems all internal so 
Um, yeah, as long as it matches next door, same size trim, same, you know, just so it keeps the building looking similar Symmetrical. and not mismatched and sure. pieced together, you know. I have one question. Um, so this is for obviously the center. Um, are you the owner of the one on the left that currently does not have a dormer as yes. well? Is there any plan in the future to put a dormer on that one to make it match all three bays? He's mentioned it because that has a attic space too for a studio, but I, I'm not sure where he's at of doing that one as well. Okay, I was just but, curious. Right, but that one would be the same. It'd be in the middle of that next window. Okay, thank you. No. One more. Richard? So, so each of those two units have three windows, so you'd basically Correct. center it over yep. the center one yep. of that unit. Yep. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Paul? I'm just making some bullets on conditions that we will uh, could add to the approval here to workshop with the group. Um, so I think the ones I had heard were same size and type of window. Window, uh, uh, dormer window, center mullion centered on center window below. Um, dormer not higher than existing dormer and hardy siding. Plank siding was what we had originally, um, and that might be the difference of what they permitted and what we actually ruled on with the condition. So, yeah. Is there anything else that folks think is worth defining or consistent? I mean, I think, does it worth putting the intent of uh, it replicating the existing one in there? George? Yeah, just one thing. I, I really don't have a problem with this uh, coming down tonight. I looked up there. I wasn't really keen on it, but it really doesn't look too bad. And uh, I think if you use the hardy plank, I, I would go with that. The only other question I would have is the uh, you have listed on here the AZAC trim. So I'm assuming you're going to use the same AZAC trim for that uh, freeze board. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm good. Thank you. Tim? There's no mention of the use of J channel against the AZAC. I assume the AZAC will be datoed to receive the trim, I mean, the siding. Yes. So there's no J channel. On the, the windows will be, you have the J channel built on it. Then you have the outside corners, and I have, there'll be on the top your AZAC with the J channel underneath it. That it comes up in so there will be J channel, and the J channel will be exposed underneath the soffit on an each side of the window, or is the J channel on the window integrated? On the window, it's made into it. And what about the corner boards? What do you mean with the corner boards? Are the corner boards have integrated J, or are you applying the J channel abutting the corner boards? No, it's made into the corner. You're made into the corner. So the only location of J channel would be underneath the soffit. And the rakes, how, what's the, how is the detail on the rakes to be finished? It's a, I believe it's just the solid soffit. Should be on the list. Um, three and a half inch uh, certainty perimeter soffit. So the siding would not tuck under a, sh a shadow or the fascia, I mean the soffit, it would be, and then the, there's a, I'm not sure there's enough overhang to have soffit up the rakes. That's kind of what I thought you were, we were going to discuss right that for the rakes, but those cheek walls, you'd have the siding tuck underneath the rake boards. Is that what you're intending? Up and on the inside of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd build out the first piece of AZAC and then the siding would slide, Correct. disappear, no J there. There's no yeah. there's no room for soffit right there. It's yeah. it's yeah. almost <coughs> flush to the edge of the Quite buildings. Right. All right. Any further discussion or is there a motion? Paul. Are you looking for a motion to approve the application as complete? Or is that, was that already completed? Um, 
we can talk about if we do not feel the application is complete if you need to. No, but is that that's the motion we're looking for? No, we're looking for a motion to accept as is uh, conditions uh, to move forward with the application or deny the application. So the application has been accepted as complete already? Sorry, I'm, this might be a... I, I think that's more or less assumed. We just have the right to deny it ah. if we feel it's incomplete. I, uh, I will make a motion to approve the application with the following conditions. That the dormer replicate the existing dormer. That the same window size and type is utilized. That the same dormer height and width are utilized. That the dormer window center mullion is centered on the second story window. And that the siding is to be hardy plank. I can't write that fast, so I am going to ask you to repeat it in no, just a minute. No, he has it written down too, Laura, if you want to grab oh, it. Oh, from him. in gibberish. But yeah, I did yeah. write it down. Uh, <laughs> so I have Dormer replicate existing size. Um, so uh, yeah, so no, one is um, replicate existing Dormer. Two is same window size uh, and type. Three is same Dormer height and width as existing. And then dormer window million is centered on, on second story window center, the center second story window. And the fifth was siding to be hardy plank. All right. We have a motion with those uh, five listed out conditions. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a second by Richard. Laura. Yes. Can I make a recommendation just to reference the property you're looking to um, replicate, just for clarification, clarity? Great, thank you. So uh, I will amend. This subject property is 86. The, I believe the neighboring is 90. Correct. But I can double check it just for us. That would be great. Yes. Uh, note South Bay section of building 99th Street and separate tax yes. parcel. 90. So, correct. Uh, so existing replicate existing dormer at 90 High Street, tax parcel 11 dash. Uh, 218. Parcel was when? Somewhere? Uh, parcel was 11 218. Thank you. All right. So that is now written into the conditions. Uh, dormer replicating existing dormer on 90 High Street, parcel 11 218. All right. And we had a second. Um, do all those stand with that added? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And we have an abstention. All right. The reason for the abstention is I didn't have enough time to do the application. And I would have made an attempt to visit the parcels involved to get a good feel of what the existing structure was. Without that, in um, I'll have to repeat because it wasn't, Mike was off. Um, I abstained due to the fact that the in the time constraints of reviewing the application that was presented, it did not offer me an opportunity to pay a site visit to look at the abutting property, it's dormer. So with that, I'll abstain. Uh, so the application was approved with those conditions. Um, so you will be able to see City Hall for the application, on, I mean, the permit. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other old business that may become before the commission tonight? Any other old business? Great. Seeing there is none, we will move on to new business. First on the agenda is Leah Jensen is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install a new sign on existing posts on a property located at 156 High Street. Dana. Yep. So the applicant is, as mentioned, in looking to install a freestanding sign utilizing the existing granite posts. The sign will be 11.66 square feet. Um, and it's proposed to be constructed of wood with final letters supported by, as mentioned, supported by the existing granite posts. Uh, there's a number of historic applications that center around signs for this property. There's been various different, a lot of them have been, um, a number of them have been utilized on those existing granite posts, some of them for the wall. 
um, and there's been a few other various um, improvements to the building. But other than that, that's all I have to cover for it. All right. I'll just add a one note that this is coming before us because staff could not find an original approval for this sign. So we just wanted to make sure that everything was on board. So, and if we have an applicant who would like to speak anymore, <laughs> <Not really. laughs> you don't have to, but if we have any specific questions, yeah, I mean, um, the sign that's I'm asking for, it was there 2014 to 2018. And we got all the drawings and plans, but Dana said she couldn't find them. But so I just kind of used the same, I mean, it was the same one. I thought I got rid of it, but it was deep in storage. So we had stuck it up because we weren't getting a lot of people coming to the store because they couldn't see it. And I didn't realize I had to go back and get a permit. So we were just trying to get foot traffic. Okay, and can you just state your name for the record? Oh, Leah Jensen. Thank you. All right, I'll open up to questions or comments from the board. Tim. Um, I, I recall a similar, exact same dimensional sign, different color, same material that Soldati Law Offices once hung in those same posts. And I believe they went through that process. So I'd be in favor of this. I have no problems with this sign. I guess I'll speak. Um, honestly, I have no problem with this sign. I <laughs> was very happy with it. But like I said, we're just doing our due yep, diligence nope, to make that's sure. Fine. Um, but I think it fits the post well. I think it's, you know, it, it, it's not too elaborate or overbearing or anything. I actually really like the sign, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Paul. Oh. Just a quick clarification. This, so this sign's installed. It was just, there, we couldn't find the approval. So this is just a retroactive right. approval. Got it. Yeah, fine, sign looked fine to me. Tim? There is a downside to this sign in its location, that the fact that the city of Somersworth felt obliged to put their sign in front of it. Yes. But that's for another argument. <laughs> Dana did that. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Any other comments, questions, or do we have any motions? Richard. I'll make a motion to approve this as presented. We have a motion to approve. I was... Approve as presented. Do we have a second? Second. I saw a second by George. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing there is none. All right. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. All right, next on the agenda, Gregory Morrison is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to replace entry doors on property located at 30 Prospect Street. Dana. Yep, so um, they are proposing to replace the entry doors. Both existing doors are metal doors that will be replaced with new metal doors. The new front door is proposed to be a nine light door and the side door is proposed to be replacing kind. Um, there are a few historic applications um, regarding um, residing, roofing for the barn, um, an awning replacement, tree removal, window replacement, and roof replacement. All right. Thank you, Dana. Do we have an applicant who would like to come up if there's any questions? Only if we have questions? All right. All right. Open it up to board discussion. Tim. Would you please? I believe the front door is currently a solid or at least flat panel door, and the proposal is to replace that door with a six light, nine light rather? Yes, Greg Morrison, yes. And is there not two side lights next to that door? Yes. Was there ever a, a light in the door that was ever in that house in that doorway i only know since i've been there and there hasn't yeah, okay thank Those you doors are probably circa 1970 or 1950. Uh, are they metal uh-huh okay wasn't sure the paint kind of deceived it a little bit it's and been painted a few times paint. yeah i'm gonna paint them the same um the room is dark understood behind that door 
So the additional light, I think, will be helpful. I think the additional light originally was intended the way that layout of the house was the two side window side lights were to add that light. And originally, I don't think we have a good even historic photo straight on. They're all at some sort of a skew or an angle. Um, I'm not inclined to approve the front door with a nine light window or a window at all only because I don't think historically there was a window in that door there. Um, the side door, I don't have a, I would not have any opposition to that, but I'll, I'll be open to be convinced by the rest of the board. Okay. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Paul? I guess a question for those that might have more architectural <clears throat> history knowledge than me. Um, the tw significance, one of the 20 houses built after the 1930s, does that mean this is built, do we know what year this house was built? 1950. 1950, okay. If so I may, Paul, that, that what that refers to is there was a survey done in the 30s uh -huh. and this house was been constructed after that survey, so that's why the, no the historical data doesn't go back that far. Okay. So 1950, so this is like federal but mid-century. It's like a federal style mid-century kind of. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know how you describe it, but um, I, I'm sympathetic to wanting more light, and I think there's likely a door that has windows in it that could meet the aesthetic of the house and the neighborhood. Um, I, I, whether it's nine light or some other light configuration, <clears throat> I'm not sure, but um, I'm certainly inclined to, the side door I agree is great, fine. Front door, uh, <clears throat> um, any, almost any door is gonna be better than the door that's there. So um, so I'm, I'm just curious in what others think uh, in terms of window configuration on that front door. And the reason I'm going like this, uh, just for other, um, so on the front of the packet that the town does provide us just for Paul's information, it does list this as a colonial revival. Um, the reason I was iffy about federal is federal is usually, you know, um, doesn't have a hip roof, you know, different features of that sort. So um, I'm in agreement. I. I don't like the door that's on the front now. I don't like that there's no definition to it. It's just a very blank, stark. Um, I I know that this is a 1950s build um, where lights were still, whether it was with glass or so, there's usually some kind of definition on these doors. So I'm not opposed to a nine light door there, um, but that's just my opinion. I'd be curious of others. Liz? <laughs> I mean, if if I had to do it myself, I, that's a different question. I don't know. I feel like the nine light is like uh, it would be more divided than anything any other other windows on the building. Like maybe it doesn't need to be. It could be one light. It could be even two lights would match the proportion of the window to the left. Um, although it might be hard to match the um, the side lights precisely. So maybe that would be iffy. And, and then I guess if you, the other thing is if you put a window in there, the sill of the, of the glass is gonna be higher than the sills of the side lights, most likely, although we don't know for sure here. Um, so I guess there's a, that question is, what's it gonna look like next to those existing side lights? The, the bottom of the glass and the door is gonna be higher than the side lights, probably. Um, but we don't know exactly we don't have a submittal of a product for the door, I don't think. Am I missing that? Have you um, decided where or which door you were buying for this particular door yet? Where? No. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, have, I have people for that. Okay. Would you be opposed to um, one of Liz's suggestions where instead of a nine light, where it's the nine divided, like a different glass type there? No. Okay. I just thought keep it simple, the same style that is on the side, I would put on the front. It would give me what I wanted was more light in that room. Okay. But I wanted a door with, at first I thought round, but somebody told me, no, the whole rest of the house is square. Round's going to look out of shape. And 
So I said, well, the same as the side, but that's not important to me. Just I wanted a little more light in there. Okay. Richard? Going into this, I really didn't know what to think about this one. It's obviously an infill house. It's not a huge contributing to the character of the neighborhood, but... You know, here well, the I think it looks a lot better than when I moved in. <laughs> uh, this well has said. nothing to do with condition, just the overall appearance of the house, the structure, size, and yeah. proportions and stuff is it's what not I mean. The, it's probably the one of the younger ones in ex the neighborhood. Exactly. So it, it's a little out, out of the character in that sense is what I'm trying to portray here. Um, you know, here in the other discussion, I, I do think that a single light window would give it the more proportion that matches the rest of the house rather than the nine light, at least on the front door. And, you know, that would still give you the light you're looking for. Yeah. And um, um, I think nowadays the windows are one light and it's just a little frame that goes on it. Most of them are that way. That's light. the way my yep. side door is today. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure my contractor will be able to find one like that. Yep. I don't shop for doors regularly, but... Yes, we're not asking um, with that particular, uh, it's an in stock usually, it's not like a custom, anything that they're talking about at this moment is not a custom. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm fine. Something like that. I just wanted a window there. Further discussion from the board? Comments, questions? Tim? Um, if it's a any light at all is a raised panel potential for the bottom section as the side sections as a two ray two panel is there do you propose a raised panel on this door or is it flat um i asked i think contract. what that means yeah. it, he's talking about these little bump outs basically i have people that do that not me you may be an yeah. expert in contracting and carpentry and doors i'm not I'm going to have him buy a door. I don't know. So, so if you look at the, the front of these the counters here, these are a recess panel versus just nothing, flat panel. So what are you telling raised me? raised panel is it bumps out. Right, but what are you telling me? I'm just a I was asking you what door did you think you were putting back. You're telling me what door to get. <laughs> I don't know. And now I have to go to my contractor. Well, I know nothing about doors or munions or I, any of those things. I think if we were to ask for a single light front entry door there, the stock door is going to be a two panel raised. Mm -hmm. They're going to have almost in any, any place. Um, other than that, it may be a very short turnaround, but it won't be a stock item, which is irrelevant for this application anyway. So um, I'll, I'll, I'd like to make a motion if, if there's no more discussion. Well, whatever you decide, I'll have to communicate it to my contractor because he hasn't moved forward yet. And so I don't know those kind of things. I'll need it in writing. That's fine. What it will be part of the approval. Requiring. Yes, that will be part of the approval if the motion passes. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion before a motion comes forward? All right, Tim. I'd like to make a motion to accept the application. The side door can remain, uh, stay in the application as it was presented. The front door to be amended to describe it as a single light, two raised panel door versus um, a nine light that was presented. I don't think you need to even add the last part, but. No, as long as the contractor will know what you mean by that. Because um, he hasn't bought doors or anything yet. That's what we want. That's, for these, um, that's actually what we prefer, right? We don't want things built or purchased because if we make these kind of decisions, then you're stuck, right? We don't right. want that. So it's actually perfect that nothing's been purchased. Glad to hear it, actually. Um, all right, so we have a motion. Just of course. Uh, I was going to say, same as that door, but one window instead of nine light. Just, right, same it. size yep. window, probably. Yep. Same textures. So yeah. The, yep. And now, like I said, I think that one just has a little plastic yep. frame that goes in there, <clears throat> and they pop in and out even. So the door that I would present it, I made an amendment to, is 
it doesn't have that pop in frame. It's just the glass. One piece of glass. Correct. Yeah. Well, that's fine with me. Yeah. Can I just add, if he would like both doors to have just one light, I would approve that as well. So if he he could do either on the side door, it could be nine light or one light. I would I would yeah, approve I, either yeah, condition. I have no need to keep the side one the same as it is. I just want to replace my doors. Mm -hmm. All right. Based on the conversation that has come up since a motion, and we haven't had a second yet, Tim, do you want to add that that's a possibility? That way they'd match. I'll admit that. Um, motion that the application be accepted as, as presented with these following amendments that both doors be single light two raised panel doors clarification for myself because I kind of wrote it where I thought you were going to go so I put side door stay as presented or to be single light I don't know if we should do or, <laughs> but. All right, so you want it to be both doors. I'd rather see them match, so if you're going to change them, make them both one, one light. Works for me. Probably cheaper. All right, so we have a motion on the floor for the side and front doors to be a single light, two panel door. Do we have a second? second. We have a second by Richard. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Seeing there is none, motion passes with those two conditions. And what do I do next? Do I come back to the town? Yes, so the city will have a record of our approval and then you can get your building permit with those two and that will be spelled out in that. A certain amount of days or tomorrow or? Um, we, we have a building permit for him. Um, so I will, we will follow up with you. Oh, um, send me an email or something and then I'll come and collect it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Someone will reach out to you. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, Michael Morin is seeking a certificate of appropriateness for a door replacement on a property located at 67 Winter Street. Dana. Uh, so the proposal is to replace the back door and frame in kind. Um, the existing door is steel with a full glass window. The proposed door will be 32 by 80 um, full light prime steel door. And there are only a couple applications for historic um, applications on this property. They have an above ground pool. Um, they received an approval to um, replace siding and one for that was determined to be unnecessary. It was maintenance. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have an applicant who would like to speak more or just wait until we have a question? Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll open it up to the board. I'm ready to make a motion, but we'll go ahead and discuss. <laughs> Back to Well, hold, is there any discussion? <laughs> Paul. Uh, Chris, again, I'm just following your guys' lead. Um, so not high visibility doors, so I don't, I don't know if that matters to us, but I would say kind of like what we just approved for consistency, a single light double raised panel door is what they have for a front door. So if we're looking to for consistency, that would be more consistent with what appears to be a, a historic front door here. Uh, for me, um, with historic homes, it's not always common for the front door to match the rest of the house. It depends on the style, the viewpoints, and different things of that sort and what else is going on in the house, but I would Love to hear other people's comments around that. Richard? I was actually going to have a question as to where is this is being replaced with exactly the same door if they really needed to come to this. I'd... It did because, again, we could not find the original application approval okay. for the original door. Gotcha. Otherwise, yes, it would have been because done as minimal. Sounds so much more like maintenance, that, you know, bordering on that, whereas it's not being changed. But I yeah. certainly understand. And, and, again, being on the very back of the house where it can't be seen from any public way, I really don't have much opinion on it and if it's already been there I'm okay with it staying the way it is Tim I probably want to mimic what what uh, Richard just spoke about that this is choiceless on the applicants part they're not asking to change really change the door or its appearance it is 
have no choice but to replace the door because it's broke and it's just going back in there's a vested interest that it's been like that for a number of years and it's not a the previous application wanted to change the doors this applicant needs to change the door um, I have no issues with just approving as submitted and just so you're aware, when I was reviewing this one for minimal, um, it was only because we've had where things have been done without our approval, and if we see those come forward, right, and we can't prove that we saw this door at any point in time, it does have to come before us, so. Understood. Yep. All right, Liz. Um, I just have a question. If, is the exterior trim being replaced? Hi, Michael Moran, 67 Winter Street. So yeah, there there is a final. The house is final sided, and there's aluminum wrap around the existing uh, trim. Mm -hmm. So they they have to remove that, and then they're just going to use the the trim that comes with the door. The door has a. It looks like a brick mold trim. That's right. It's. Um, if you look at the picture, it's, it's yeah. final. It's got a, like a aluminum wrapped. Um, around the trim. Yep. Just thinking. Yeah, it does list brick mold on the page where brick? from Geldwin. Oh, I don't I don't know what that means, brick. It's not brick like No, no, it's, it's no, just a it's little a style of molding. A two inch oh. trim alongside. Okay, the door. yeah, then there's yeah. gonna be a, an additional like, I don't know, four inch piece or something with the where it's going to run to the J channel. Are you doing interior trim? No, that's going to stay the same. Okay, so in your materials list, I did see some additional trim there, so that's probably good news. Well, that's um, yeah, I think <laughs> I think they ordered it, but it's it's the original no. trim is going back over it. I'm not going to do anything interior. So okay, because it does say finger joint pine, one by six by eight, and one by four by eight. So I think that would be that uh, could uh, be the exterior, the exterior as well. I think that is on the, well, he just said they're not replacing the interior trim. If I'll assist, if <clears throat> may, um, because this is vinyl, I mean, uh, probably aluminum wrapped. Right. <clears throat> and it's alum, the, the aluminum is wrapping one by four. So that when that door comes out, that aluminum most likely will not survive that right. removal. Yep. And then the new flat stock one by pine will be applied and then new Aluminum wrapping applied on top of the pine. Is that correct? I don't uh, No, I'm, I'm just going to paint that white. You'll paint it white. I mean, it's going to look like it is now, but white. Correct. Exactly. Yep. I think it'll look a lot better. Hmm? <laughs> I think it'll look better than it looks now. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> and my cat will be happy because he can see, you know, right now it's all boarded up. He can't see anything. All right. Any further discussion or do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept as presented. All right, we have a motion to present, uh, accept as presented. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Whoever the minute taker decides got the second. All right, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Seeing there is none, the motion passes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, any other new business before the commission tonight? Any other new business? All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to workshop business. Tim. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. There was no workshop held this evening. Uh, the intent will be most likely we'll probably meet next month. Reason being is communication between myself and the um shop teacher shane chick hasn't really take had an opportunity to take place yet for adjustments of that um mm, computerized rendering and until we can finalize and tweak that to what we think is what we would discuss there wasn't anything to discuss but once we get close with that computerized rendering he's going to make a um, a demo for us to then look at and decide um, I have collected about 75% of the necessary material. 
Um, I think we needed 30. I think I have like 21 of them right now, 22, somewhere in that area. Uh, and by the time we get to manufacturing these, we'll have an ample supply. So that's, that's it. All right. Um, I just had some further things to add on to the workshop, and then we'll go around. Um, so there was a communication from Catherine. Caitlin. Katie, Caitlin, thank you. Um, and I know that they wanted all the planks as soon as possible so they could have those on hand because they had a student that they were looking to do. Um, I know you're working with Shane, but I am going to say that we should have a workshop before the May meeting. So we, I promised her that we would look into the first three so that they can get that rendering bogged down and like one cut. I mean, I, I intend to uh, deliver the 20 some odd I have now Friday to the shop. So the, the blank can be made now. I just was hoping to collect all 30 pieces so they don't have to set up a second time. But if we got what we got and 20 will last us a while, so. Right. But I'm more um, putting it to the board that if uh, I really want us to have three um, voted on our next workshop so we can come to them and say, these are the three so we can do kind of like, okay, this is where we're going to tweak. This is how we have to fit the sizing, you know, so Sean and them have a better idea of what they need. So that is homework for everybody who's been part of this workshop that come with your three, your reasoning, because we're going to decide the three that next workshop. So all of those who also want to be involved in that, please do come, but come with your ideas and I will communicate that. And I hope George, you will too, to um, Frank and um, Arlene. Arlene as well, so that they are aware, because we want their input around the three as well, obviously, but that's homework for everybody that I want. So I'll deliver those blanks, the, the well, the one by ones to the shop Friday. Okay. Day after tomorrow. And, um, the dimensions of the exterior and the pattern and, and a routered edge is just going to change no matter what we pick on the infill. So at least they can get that student started on whatever it is, how many you can do at once. And perhaps even by tomorrow or Friday morning, I'll have a few more to add to that collection. Perfect. All right. Can I ask a couple questions? Yes. Um, what size are your guys' signs? That you're doing for the square place. square feet would be the width is one foot and the center height is also well it's actually 11 and a quarter um but there's uh an arch uh, there's an arch in the middle of it so it's the entire square inches isn't really you know it's not by 11 by 11 for square inches but it's, it's not greater than one square foot it would never be greater than one square okay. foot that would be then, contrary to ordinance and your standards of review but it is material wise the AZAC, yes, but it's a carved, so that actually goes within what we've allowed. Right. With it's story. 11 in the, in the raw, it's 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. Is there any consideration to update the standards of review, or is it that the board feels comfortable that though it's not? So the way that the standards of review reads is that traditional materials such as wood, glass, bronze, or iron shall be used, plastic, aluminum, and vinyl strongly discouraged unless it can be demonstrated that it's historically consistent with the architecture of the building. I don't know if you just want to. I if think this kind of goes back to where we had language in the ordinance uh, during a couple of our versions, and we had one where we said acceptable uh, materials can be carved, okay. and it got left out on the actual one that city council voted on. <laughs> your standards of review, though, are under your guys's jurisdiction, though, right? Yes. Um, so I think we should take that um, to your point as maybe an amendment we need to look into further. But okay. Yeah. Just a thought. Yeah. For it. So, obviously, we're going to come up with three houses. Do we need to come up with the info that it's going to be on the plaque as well, or is that going to be decided once we know which the houses are? I think the more info you know about the house, the better. Like, if you know the circuit date, like, so we don't put that all on the museum to look into, the better. Um, I think we can maybe even, if we have three houses, it won't be too hard to look them up. So we should know a little bit about them, not just which house. Well, I would hope that we have reasons, not just go, it's pretty, right? <laughs> like, that's never going to fly with me. It's pretty. So I would hope that we have reasons. So Fair enough. Yeah. Paul? Uh, I, <clears throat> I missed the workshop, so apologies. So we're looking for three inaugural houses. Are they getting, are they, are we, like, funding those signs for them and, like, gifting those signs? Or is it just as, like, a, 
test case so we can come up with mock-ups and so the original thought was that the HDC part of this workshop that we would submit three that uh, exemplify what we're looking for in the district or our history just come up with three houses and yes we are looking for to ask the city to fund those got it so noodle on which three yes that's what we think uh, that would be um, <coughs> 10 percent no 10 percent right houses yeah one, yeah it would only be one percent yeah it's a 10 percent of we have the three hundred houses but sorry my so. brain is not working yeah. tonight yes <laughs> so we um we have over 300 but rounds and okay. so we were thinking 300 yes yeah. the one percent thank you i had to carry that zero <laughs> oh all right any other questions or comments around the um plaques George. I just want to say thank you to Tim for taking the time out to collect these because it's probably a pain in the butt. I appreciate that. My, my back seat's a little full right now, but that's all right. <laughs> thank you. All right. If there's no other conversation around the plaques, I will open it to Richard. So I sent you and uh, Kim. Kim. Sorry, just to avoid the name. Um, an email about the minutes, doing the minutes as a secretary. And, you know, obviously we don't have a long list of people that volunteer for this. I find it very difficult to do the minutes during a meeting. I've done them for many years. I am now working a second job, so I don't have the free time I used to. I just, I would, I think that it's reasonable to ask the city to have staff do the minutes for this for the historic district commission they do it for the planning board they do it for the zba and nearly every other committee that the council has so i i think we should pursue that avenue if we can dana can we ask, dana, can we ask you to have that as a takeaway to maybe uh, broach with michelle and bob yep. i can relay that information to the director and to the city manager of course and if I may help with that request, I would totally support that request that you can add my name to that list that I think it should happen as well. Um, the secretary for this board is usually well taxed. Um, and so it would be beneficial if we had an appointee from the staff. Thank you. Any other, Kim? And I would add to that. So I'm not going to be here next month, um, and I would prefer not to do the June minutes. I find, even though I'm very qualified to take them, that I don't seem to have them error free, uh, and my staff who's typing them is getting, she's done. So. Microphone. Your microphone. microphone. Yeah. So I, I'm, I said I would do them until January, and I've said I would do this month, but I would prefer not to do any of the future ones. Okay. All right, we'll have to um, either elect or hopefully have an answer from city on that by next meeting. So, all right, um, any other um, workshop business before we move on to miscellaneous or even communications? No, all right, we'll move on to m communication and miscellaneous. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, oh, for a second. Sorry. Um, so um, on your desk is a flyer. Um, please, that we are hoping you can share with your friends, neighbors, um, community members. We are holding another um, community workshop for master plan chapters on Thursday, um, the second May second. So that is next week um, at six o'clock. It is going to center around natural resources, um, the natural resource chapter and the vision chapter um, and land use chapter. So it is a lot about what are we looking for in Summersworth, um, visualize and things like that. So we'd love to get voices from all aspects and corners of the community. So if you can register beforehand too, that gives us great information about how many copies to bring and things like that. Um, you'll probably see more lots of emails from us encouraging people to come so we hope that um, people in the um at home and your friends and neighbors and you guys can come to the meeting so we'd love to have you there thank you any other communication or miscellaneous tonight george i just wondered how we make it out with the trim on the 
what do you sell to hope? George, I knew you were going to ask, and I was going to have know. to say I'm not I came unprepared again, so I apologize. Nope. Um, I did relay that to the director at last month's, um, after yep. I think I came last month as well to the meeting. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to follow up before this meeting regarding that, um, but I can repeat my same answer, and I will follow up with Director Mears. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I know at least two members here joined in a cleanup of Seversworth, their first uh, round on over near Home Depot, Taco Bell, and other things. So I wanted just to say thank you for the two um, board members who did go and participate in that. Unfortunately, I was not able to attend. I was preoccupied that day um, with other things, but um, I'm hoping that we can get a lot more of our other board members to come out and start helping with that initiative, especially around, again, the historic district and other things. Uh, one question I had, um, is the city going to do another um, pickup day? I think we usually had one with, um, some of the youth connection used to run one the week before um earth day that's what i'm thinking of yes um but i don't believe that happened this year it hasn't happened from covid since i fall out from covid um and okay, so during those times that. too the <laughs> citizens were allowed to use a i don't know if it was a specially marked bag but it was a certain colored bag that DPW provided for roadside cleanup. Haven't seen any of those anymore. I, I, I mean, well, I probably public works may have yeah. more of those still. I don't know. Encourage us to maybe participate then since that initiative has kind of fallen off since COVID. But um, that's all I have for tonight for communication or miscellaneous. Um, any, Paul? <clears throat> so nothing solid to report, but I do just want to start planting some seeds for things that I'm hopeful to uh, advance at some point. <clears throat> the mayor has, uh, <clears throat> the mayor's task force on housing has met, um, I think technically two or three times, but um, you know, there's obviously an ongoing conversation around housing, uh, uh, likely a conversation related to that um, on zoning. Uh, there was a presentation that the Stratford Regional Planning um, had with uh, the planning board and the um, mayor's housing uh, committee. Um, and one of the takeaways from that is, you know, Summersworth doesn't have a ton of buildable land. Therefore, infill development is, um, you know, essentially part of the recommendation strategy for housing, whether that's ADUs or, um, you know, true infill with new new structures. And I've been thinking about, you know, how do we accomplish that? How, what are obstacles to uh, allowing infill development from happening? Um, and in the historic district, obviously, uh, the review of this board is is critical to that um, proceeding and for um, housing to be developed in and around the downtown. So things that have come to my mind. <clears throat> and again, I don't have solid proposals on this, but <clears throat> I think there might be room to uh, to have either future workshop business on this or to, to create a strategy um, is uh, sort of the conversation around ADUs, um, particularly conversion of barns um, and garages in the historic district into housing. Uh, a lot of those structures are in my opinion, my barn included uh, is de demo by neglect. Um, you know, I don't have eighty thousand dollars to to structurally repair and reside a barn that has no functional value to me whatsoever. Um, but if there were a precedent or process for the HTC and the city to convert those buildings into housing, thereby saving a historical resource, a bet altered um i think that could be could be one avenue to sort sort of accomplish you know sort of two birds kill two birds with one stone as it were um just the uh, things i'm processing that i'm trying to, i'm trying to think of you know uh a lot of, a lot of constituents to get on board put it that way so anyways just playing that seed all right thank you any other communication tim 
Um, I did receive a communication from Council Witham in regards to last month's um, minute meeting amendment, which spoke to the months prior about the telephone polls. Um, he reiterated to me that it's not only the historic district that has multiple polls in the same location, but it's an ongoing issue that council has been struggling with utilities to tra address. So we're, we're not alone in that fight, um, and they're continuing to make that fight. So, George? Well, we're at it <laughs> with, the, with the polls. Um, I had a problem on my street in front of my house and my neighbor across the street. Of uh, they repaved the roads a few years ago on the hill, and one of the gas lines it, it's ten inches wide and it's five and a half inches, five inches deep, and it's been a real pain. And I have called uh, Mike at the uh, public works and found out it's it's not a city thing, um, it's the uh, utility company. So I spent quite a time on the phone getting trying to find somebody to to fix it with no avail then last year i did get a hold of somebody twice and they were going to come out and do it um recently i just called again and uh they they came out uh, by the time i got home that afternoon they were out there looking at it because i told them we were going to fill it with cement or pavement or tar because we'll get really sick of hitting it and they were out there and Apparently, the city doesn't give, it has to give them a permit. It'll have to be after April 15th. So I'm in the process of waiting. Uh, if it doesn't get filled by the end of the summer, I'm going out to fill it with cement because people are sick of hitting it. It's, it's brutal. It, it's 10 inches wide, but like five, five and a half inches deep. And they haven't brought that up to the surface when that was paved. And there's a couple others on the hill I've noticed, probably not that deep, but they haven't done it. My gripe for the day. All right. So I guess that might be a quick ask to Dana to say if they see a building permit come through from the gas company, maybe hopefully. No, it won't. It will. Um, no, so I won't see it. It would probably be. Um, it's a public works permit okay. because anything that's done in the right of way does need a permit. Yeah, they told so me. that would that would be the same for you, George. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> no oh, you mean if I fill it with cement? <laughs> yes. That's gonna be in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, now you just let them know who to go uh, for. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I've gone out and that was painting. George Poolin that was speaking. <laughs> just call me. Yeah, yeah it's a good idea. Yeah. Call me. Don't make a yeah. statement. Uh, well, hopefully, Public Works hears the comments and that. I painted it orange so that people see it. Uh, you know, spray paint. It's bad, but it, it anyway. is after the moratorium. So if you happen to re speak to Unitil again, um, permit season is open. So. Yeah, I mean they were the, the ladies just they were very nice. I, I got to give them that. There was, and I believe what they were, and they were there that afternoon. So I'm confident that this is the year they're going to get it. So, but thank you. All right. Any other comments or miscellaneous tonight? If not, we will hold or open to motions. A motion to adjourn and go Bruins. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second. second by Richard? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>